getting. And hopefully you guys can uh, tolerate my voice here. I did talk some earlier. Well, a little bit ago. I didn't do too much damage. Not too much. Hope you guys are doing okay today. Let me make sure all systems are up and running and firing and all that good stuff. Good to see you guys, by the way. Let me pull up uh, COT. I don't quite have that yet. There we are. <clears throat> and if you guys hear me clearing my throat, I'll try to cover up the microphone, right? So you guys don't hear it. It may happen. Yeah. It may happen. Okay, Revelation. We are in the book of Revelation. Again, I'm not going to talk a long time tonight. Uh, well, I can't say that. You know, I said that this afternoon. I was I was coming on this afternoon for about 10 minutes. Uh, that turned into a time. In fact, it was so much time that uh, Robin said, break. You know, that's a... <clears throat> That's over the mark. Tonight we're going to read out of Revelation 14. You guys ready? 14. Revelation 14. Revelation 14. If anybody was temporarily blocked on Mixler uh, today, well, that was to keep the... Uh, that was, that was somewhat inappropriate. And I hope that, uh, I'll do pray that person has a better day coming up. If there are any other issues, please write me. Please write. I think I covered that earlier today. <clears throat> but write me. If there's an issue, problem, or something like that, just, just write me. <clears throat> and we can, uh, by the way, speaking of writing, I went through a lot of emails. I may not respond to some of them, but I did go through a lot of emails uh, today. Okay, sometimes I'll read emails and address those emails. Uh, sometimes at the end of a broadcast or in the middle of a broadcast or, you know, different ways. So keep that in mind. Revelation 14. All right, we just got down with the beast. The two beasts. So everybody knows there there are two beasts. And according to the book of Daniel, again, pointing to the book of Daniel, it is a good uh, roadmap into how these beasts operate in the earth. Okay. How they operate in the earth. Now we're in Revelation 14. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Period. Now again, Everybody has an idea about the 144,000, okay? My my summary, you could say, or my overview of the 144,000 is uh, strictly that which is found in the Word of God without any theories or speculation or really interpretations, right? <clears throat> so keep that in mind. It means... Uh, it, it's not about somebody being right about who they are. No. I want you guys to think of something, though. A lot of people, uh, the reason, there's a reason the 144,000 had to be sealed, right? We know that by reading the trumpets, that they were involved in a terrible time. And they had to be sealed so that when God loosed, when he gave the angel of the key to the bottomless pit, and the angel with the key to the bottomless pit opened up the pit, right? The 144,000 had to be sealed so they would not be affected, right? Not be affected by those things which came out, all right? All right? So they have the Father's name written in their foreheads as, as, as something else. The actual seal... It's the Father's name written in the foreheads. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that is highly significant, right? Because who in the world can write the Father's name? Who? Who can do that? Who can write the Father's name? And if it's written in their forehead, what type of a seal is this? Is it a physical seal? 
It certainly is a seal. <clears throat> Let those things from the bottomless pit do recognize, right? They did not mess with 144,000. But it's a seal having his father's name written in the foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven and a voice of many waters. And as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harps, harpers harping with their, with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts, and before the elders. And no man could learn that song, but the 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth. That's very important, too. They were redeemed, saved from the earth. They were saved from the earth. Nobody could sing this song except the 144,000. Nobody else could sing it. Now, what about the trillions of people who came before the 144,000? Hmm? What about the apostles? What about the people who walked in the time of the apostles and those who walked after? Do we just discard them? No. No, we don't. And I'm reiterating that they had to be sealed because they were on earth and, and at a time nobody wants to be on earth. You know how everybody says, I want to be one of the 144,000. Well, you've got to be on earth at a specific time when the devils are let out, right? A lot of people also say, I don't want to be here during that time. The reason they had to be sealed was so they would not be touched by what was let loose on the earth, right? That's why it was, it was told to those angels who had power to destroy the earth not to do anything until the God had sealed his servants in their foreheads, the 144,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Now, I can tell you right now, a description is going to be read of these, and I don't qualify. I'll just be blunt and tell you, I'm not one of those. Here we go. <clears throat> they sung a new song, Revelation 14.4. These are they which were not defiled with woman, for they are virgins. Up oh, there I go. That's it. That's it. I'm not one of them. Let's continue. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. So they are pure. Right? They are pure. These were redeemed from among men. Even in the, um, even in the, San, no, not Sanskrit, but the Aramaic Hebrew about the um, 144,000 from from the tradition of the Jews, they keep these men. There are, in fact, 144,000 kept always. They are pure from all things. They are educated differently. This happens right now that people are not aware of. <clears throat> A lot of people are not aware of that. Now, in my humble opinion, Right. In order to be a virgin, not defiled by a woman, so it absolutely told us why they were virgins. It, it told us that. They were not defiled, defiled of woman. And what that means is their flesh was not consecrated into the earth, into the normal functions like you and I. That did not happen. Right. It didn't happen. <clears throat> they are virgins. Virgins. Right. So it gives us context into why it said virgins. Well, if you're not defiled by a woman and you're a virgin, right, and you're, you follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth, and they had to be sealed, right? These here are first it listen to this these were redeemed from among men being first fruits unto God and unto the lamb first fruits not second or third fourth and fifth fruits first fruits what is a first fruit the first yield of a kind is a first fruit isn't it the first yield of a kind now if they were first fruits unto God and to the Lamb, right? Is that all that we can attribute to them? No. Listen, and in their mouth was found no guile. Now, I don't curse and do those things. I don't do that. But 
99.999% of those on the earth have guile in their mouth or have had guile in their mouth. These have no guile in their mouth. Now, there's only one way I know for a person not to have guile in their mouth. And what that means is you have never spoken anything, right, contradictory of, of cursings, of a foulness, of a, of a flesh-based thing. The only way that can happen is if you have not spoken at all. If you have not spoken at all, there's no guile in your mouth. This almost looks like infants. First fruits, very young. It almost looks like infants, babies, young people who are not defiled of anything. Babies. Babies. Right? A baby human being is a virgin. A baby human being, there's no guile found in their mouth. They haven't spoken anything. See, guile can also be a philosophy. It can also be a belief. It can also be a great many things. But a baby has spoken no such thing. They're also first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. They are pure. A first fruit unto God is pure. 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 Not so much perfect. Pure. Purity is where it stands. Pure. These could be little children. My, my, who can't even speak. And their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. They are without fault. Now, who in the world among us can be without fault? Who has no guile in the mouth? Because even after we are redeemed in this process of redemption, we are encouraged to get, get that filth out of our mouth. We are encouraged not to have corrupt communications, to be holy in all manner of communications. We are encouraged to be clean. We are reminded that we are washed by the blood of the Lamb. And there's one description I did not see here. I did not see a description where they had to be totally washed from all the the stuff they did. I didn't see that. When you have no guile in your mouth, that does not qualify to only one person in the Word of God besides Christ was this ever spoken of. Only one person. So, the, the, this is not, you know, it, how can it be? Hmm? Somebody said, oh, <clears throat> let's continue. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Now, do you see that? Do you see that? I want you guys to capture something. We just talked about the 144,000. And it's so, it's so incredible. Why make mention of the 144,000? It must mean something in the Old Testament. In fact, it does. And I've never read that before. Never read that before. But if you think this is the only place you're going to find the 144,000, you're wrong. And it's a reason they pop up at this time. God fulfills everything he declared. This was declared. And in Revelation is the fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. We're going to see that. Now, it says, uh, Revelation 14, 6, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him. 
for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and, and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen the great city, because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive the mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and of the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever. And they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. There's an emphasis here placed on the doom of those who receive the mark. And no one should take this mark lightly. No one. No one. Hmm? No one. <clears throat> Somebody says, but every man is his, every man in his own order. Christ be the first fruits after where they are. Christ and his coming. Yes. But the 144,000 are covered in the Old Testament. They're spoken of. It is a declaration. It is going to be fulfilled. It's probably not well understood because this part of the Old Testament is not usually talked about. It's one of those passages that can, you know, you just kind of just don't see it. You know, you just kind of skip over it. But don't worry. We want to cover everything. These, these angels and their declaration to the world. I want you guys to be keen on something. They said with a loud voice, right? The angel who has the everlasting gospel, right? That preaches to them that dwell on the earth. Now, this is, now listen, he saw an angel fly in the midst of heaven. What about this angel? He has the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. This angel preaches to them that dwell on the earth of the everlasting gospel. It preaches to them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. An angel has an everlasting gospel. An angel is a messenger that preaches to them that dwell on the earth. The same thing, right? <clears throat> By order of the Most High. Remember, we're talking about God's creation here. Remember, we're talking about God's creation. So I want you guys not to get caught up on man's interpretation. And remember, it's God's creation. It's important to know Revelation, not to solve it. God never told us to solve it. That's, that's man's insatiable appetite to find information faster than the next guy. God will have his word revealed to you in truth without error. When we try to figure something out, it changes and it continues to change. Interpretations of Revelation have been altered probably since the day it was given. I know every year of my life, somebody thought Christ was coming. And every year of my life, that failed to come. And so people changed their interpretation of the Word of God. I'll be the first to tell you, I don't want to change an interpretation. Because if I do that... I believed in a falsehood the time before. And at some point, you get tired of that. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't anybody get tired of coming up with something that does not come true? That means you were believing in a lie. That's what it means. If you believe in something that's not true, let's go ahead and call that what it is. That's believing in a lie. That's what happens when humanity comes up with his own paradigm for everything. This is the Holy Word of God. Remember what is in it. And don't change a thing. 
Leave it to the living God. Because in the, listen, in this same word, you're going to read that anybody who adds to or takes away from this, God will add to or take away from them. He's going to add to them plagues or take away their portion of life. So this is not something to play with. It's not something to mold, to make it fit our own paradigm. God forbid and God stop us from doing that. That's very dangerous. Hmm? Be aware of it. Let God show you. Because when God gives us a truth, all of us have it. He gives his truth by way of the Holy Spirit. He does not give it in secret chambers. It comes by way of the Holy Spirit, and all of us will be able to confirm that truth when it comes. All of us will. Not one of us. Not two of us. All of us. One will speak. The rest will say, Amen. There it is. There'll be no contesting it. No. We'll all have the truth. We just have to be better stewards and learn to wait upon that truth. We do jump the gun, don't we? Sometimes we do. Let's go ahead and face it. We jump the gun. But what I'm emphasizing here is that with Revelation, that is dangerous. I know people don't face instant consequences. But the consequences are on the way. And let us all remind each other, this is a holy word. Sometimes we forget that. Let's continue. So this angel, this angel is saying the hour of his judgment is come. And he says, worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Then another angel comes. This angel with the everlasting gospel came. Then another angel comes, and he says, Babylon is fallen, is fallen the great city, because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. You know, there is a passage. I know a lot of people see this one way, right? I know they do. And in, in this case, People have tried to figure out who Babylon is. But I want to remind you of something. At the end of Revelation, why is the entire earth called Gog and Magog? Gog, Magog, why? Why in the book of Daniel, when it's talking about the four kingdoms that will be upon the face of the earth, each kingdom had dominion over all the earth. So it was one Babylon. But four dominions separated by four eras of time. One Babylon that had rule over everything. Men can call it whatever they want. When God names something, that's how we identify it. Not by what man names it. God never spoke anything about Hardee's. God didn't say anything about the Indy 500. He never said a word about the Olympics. Did he? He never said anything about Star Wars. Did he? See, we have all these different things that happen, and God never spoke of that, but what he did speak of were those four kingdoms and what they would be doing. And isn't it funny how that the world does exactly what God described? Hmm? Isn't that funny? This word is precious. Somebody has a question. They say, Brother Mike, uh, I informed someone we should love our brothers and sisters, and they said they are not all our brothers and sisters, but I disagree. We don't wrestle with the flesh. I'm not correct. I'll tell you what. God did not put it in us to identify the wheat from the tares. You know why? So that we can love our enemies. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. See, if we could pick who we love, we would become full of error, full of hatred and everything else, and we would ultimately divide into groups, and wars would begin based on that. God will separate the wheat from the tares. 
God warned us to be careful to entertain strangers because we entertain angels unaware, so we have no real discernment against such. If we love our enemy, and that person turned out to be a tear, then they were given an honest opportunity. Weren't they? See, if we're going to carry the gospel to give an honest opportunity to all, that can only happen by way of love. Then we truthfully extend someone love, patience, courtesies, you name it. If they turn it down, then that's what they did. But if we automatically knew somebody was a tear, we would likely curse them and say, well, they're not going to make it anyway. Why extend anything to them? Hmm? Why extend anything? See that? So when it says, Brother Michael, could this be Jeremiah 31, 15, 17? When he's talking about Babylon, of course it is, because a declaration of indignation was declared in the book of Jeremiah. That's where it comes from. If you want to understand what the what the Bible's talking about, you have to read Jeremiah. The declaration about Babylon was also found in the book of Jeremiah, though the origination of Babylon, right? And by way of the vision that was sealed with Daniel, given to Daniel, the identity of Babylon is a spiritual identity. And its doings and, and what it would do is named, its ambitions were named, everything is named. And even in today's world, the whole world operates that the, the same way God described, right? The whole world does. Mm. Let me continue here real quick. Babylon has fallen, has fallen the great city, which... The great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of wrath of her fornication. That is a key, that is a signature phrase, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, which God attributed to one place on earth. God did that. The Most High did that. And it really takes study. Right? I want my voice totally back so we can jump into that. I'm going to take a day and go back into Babylon in a way that we have not in COD before, so that you can see it yourselves. And once you see it, you won't forget it. Now, you may be shocked by it. You will. You may be shocked by it, but you will not forget it. And at that point, you'll understand why the trampling of foot, underfoot of a certain place is, is a, a three and a half years. You'll have an understanding of that, what the Lord is doing. You'll understand why. Because why in the world would Jerusalem have to be trampled for three and a half years, given all they've gone through? Why? Why would they have to go through that? Right? We'll find out. We'll find out. Lord, help us do so. We'll find out. And once you have that, be careful not to lose it. Right? Because there's a declaration made. And it has to do with the indignation of the Lord. It has to do with this indignation. All right, let's continue. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice. So we had one that came out with the everlasting gospel. One came out talking about Babylon. He said, judgment is come, right? Or, or Babylon is fallen. And then we have another one. Coming out, the third angel followed, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of wrath of uh, wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into a cup of his indignation. And that cup of indignation is described in the book of Jeremiah. And he shall be tormented, listen, with fire. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Now, I want to bring your attention here. If any man worship the beast and his image. Now, I'm going to say again how in the book of Daniel, 
we start to see what the dragon is and what this beast is. In Revelation, we saw what the beast was, and in Revelation 17, we saw the interpretation of what the beast actually is, the first beast actually is. So we know it's a, the, 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 the combination of nations throughout the earth. Not one land, all lands. Is anyone worshipping these nations? Is anyone made to worship these nations and the practices of these nations? Because I'll tell you something. What you worship, you're going to force others to comply with it. You will speak of it to others. If it be man-made and you worship it, you're going to have a strong desire to make other people conform to it. You will honor it. Whatever you worship, you're going to honor. Whatever you worship, you're going to walk toward. You'll also be a defender of. Whatever you worship, you're going to defend. Is a, is a country worth someone else's life? Yes or no? I'm going to tell you guys something. Worship is when you voluntarily observe something. When you stop in your own tracks to give honor to something, that's worship. I want you to begin to worship it enters into your heart. And you mandate that upon others. You cannot help but to mandate to another what you worship. You cannot help but to do that in this case. The worship of the first beast, which is a collection of nations. The systems of that nation, the kings of those nations, is what people will do. Now, let me ask you something. Is that happening right now? Is it? In my eyes, in my world, people do worship these nations enough that they would kill God's greatest creation in the name of it. When someone can get you to worship something, you give to that thing your essence. You know that. And whatever you worship ends up taking on a life of its own. People who worship, who worship, because this, this angel's warning about God's judgment. Third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image. And the image, oh, the image, all of us, without knowing, have worshipped things we should not have. We have. But in your knowing, are you going to worship it? Let me ask you a simple question. Is anything more precious than a human being in your world? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Is anything in your world more precious than a human being? Because let me tell you, a, let me give you a small perception of something. I've seen people, I've seen people harm a human being over a car. I've seen people harm a human being over a shelter or a house. I've seen people harm human beings countless times over mad-made notes called money. 
I have seen people harm God's greatest creation. Or buildings. I've seen people kill God's creation over property. These are all things that men idolize and they do worship. They will put you out of their houses before they give up what they worship. Many of you have known about these things. And what do you think your father thinks of a person who would dare put the creation above what God created? If he told us to love our enemies, to do unto others as we would do unto the Lord, if he told us all those things, how does he look upon us when we put things before what he loves so much, what he sent his son to die for. My Lord, have mercy. Did you hear what I said? He sent his son as a sacrifice for his beloved creation. And something has gotten a hold of humanity. Can you imagine? Hmm? Back in the time of Noah, did you see what the real problem was? Why didn't he, why did God not bind the other fallen angels? Why just the ones who took unto themselves wives? Why not, why not bind the rest of them? Hmm? Why not? Because I'll tell you something, the ones he bound crossed the line. Nobody should ever, nobody was going to cross. What they did was corrupt God's greatest creation. They corrupted mankind. They tried to replace it. They dared to infiltrate it with themselves. Now, you have fallen angels who are in a fallen state, but they're not bound like the 200 that fell on Mount Hermon that directly destroyed mankind, perverted mankind. Even Satan himself is still doing going here and there, but you have fallen angels who are bound in everlasting chains until the judgment See, when somebody messes with God's creation directly like that, to pervert the whole lot of them, right? They were dealt with. Take note of Satan. Satan only talks people into corrupting themselves, so a person can actually have a defense against Satan. They can. But when you force corruption upon God's creation, you have messed up royally. See that? Judgment is coming. And people with the mark and worship the beast and who have, a, who have the mark in the forehead. I, I want to say something about the forehead and the hand too. That's found in the Old Testament, the forehead and the hand. Do you guys know about the forehead? What is so important about the forehead? You ready? Art goes in your right hand or in your forehead. Correct. The 144,000 were sealed with the seal of God in the foreheads. They had the name of God on the foreheads. The mark of the beast goes in the forehead or in the right hand. Your forehead, your thoughts. 
specifically because it's the forehead. The same thing was mentioned in the Old Testament when it talked about the Ten Commandments. That it should be between the frontlets of the eyes, the forehead. Why? So that everything you think about, keep God's laws in it. It should be bound on your right hand. Why? Your works. So that everything you do will not exclude God's laws. So that you would be found a keeper of the commandments. Because whatever you have on your mind will manifest in your works. If you have it in your forehead or in your right hand, it will manifest in your thoughts, right? Your thoughts will not be absent the Ten Commandments, but inclusive the Ten Commandments. And your works will be complete with the Ten Commandments. Thus, you'll be a keeper of the commandments, never breaking them. But if you have the mark of the beast, in your forehead or in your right hand, if it's on your mind, then corruption is on your mind. Favorability to these earthly kingdoms is in your mind. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Did you hear me? That means on your mind is how you can capitalize with these kingdoms of the earth. We know that the beast is a sum total of the kingdoms of this earth and the kings of these kingdoms of this earth. Simply put, if we could compare the Old Testament seals and marks that God prescribed with the mark of the beast, then we could say that the systems of this world, the kingdoms of this world and the kingships of this world are in the plans of mankind. And what happens when they're trying to progress in the world or in these kingdoms? They end up doing what? Murdering their brother. They take the way of Cain. They do things for profit. Everything is for profit. They're not keepers of the commandments. They're breaking the commandments. And they do so. Like what Balaam? And for a block, for profit, maneuvering people for profit, prophesying for profit, doing things for profit, profiting in the world, not with the living God, but in the world, taking the way of Cain to murder your brother, to get rid of the competition, uh-oh, so that you can shine. Was that not the way of Cain who was a murderer? Yes, it was. So when you have that mark in your forehead, in your plans of daily life, are these corrupt ways of these kingdoms? What about your right hand? That's your works, right? Does favorability with the world show up in your works? What do they teach all of us when we're growing up? Oh, you can be anything in the world you want to be. Isn't that what they teach us? And then they teach us how to maneuver to get it. They teach us about competition, how to beat the socks off somebody else, not to lift somebody up, but how to beat them. Then you learn by way of employment that it's dog eat dog. You can love everybody all you want, but only one person is getting promoted. So everything you do is based off competition, getting there first. And in this competition, someone will die. Someone's going to lose. In your promotions, someone is going to lose. And when they don't get promoted, guess what? They end up losing their job. A family can't eat. They fall into something else. Guess what happens when the world is on your mind? It's based off covetousness, and it manifests in your works. Lord, have mercy. See what happens?
the mark of the beast. Everything in the Bible, right, always comes with a foreshadowing. Everything in the word of God comes with a foreshadowing. Every prophecy comes with a foreshadowing before it's fulfilled. And right now, people have a type of mark on their forehead and in their right hands. Hmm? Right now, my Lord, choosing the way of Cain and justifying it, saying, well, that's just life. You got to do this. See, that's the decision. You can do it your Lord's way. Or you can take the way of Cain. The world is not going to be the justification for any of us. You're going to see a lot of that this year. It'll manifest. You already see murder. You already see it. You know what people will do for fame, for notoriety, to be first, to have securities. And, oh, my Lord, in your mind, when you want securities, people end up doing everything just to make sure they have finances for next week. They'll sell out everything to do it and deal with the consequences later. Now, see, in the word of God, it says about Revelation that, you know, blessed is the person that reads the words of that prophecy. That means everybody who has ever read Revelation could have been blessed by it. How so? Because they begin to consider things like what we're talking about. And all we're doing is applying what was in the Old Testament knowledge that's found in the Word of God to the mark of the beast, not making it something of the future. Something that God has already talked about. Something God has already outlined. You know, because people have the way of something first. You don't just walk into a city and say, well, I'm a citizen of this place. That's not what you do. You hang around. You see what the ways are. You start doing things like they do things, right? And that's how it works. You get, you feel it out. You become a part of it. And then one day they'll say, well, you want to make it permanent? Oh, yes. Yes. And they do it proudly. So the ways of the place come first. Then the oath to never betray it. That means a lot of people have a type of seal of the mark on them already. See, it'd be much easier if it were a bracelet. It'd be so easy if it were a physical mark. Right? Not so easy when it goes right back to the Ten Commandments. Not so easy when it deals with repentance. Not so easy to make righteous decisions in an unrighteous world. It's not so easy then. See, because we all know that if you choose righteousness, you cannot be a friend of the world. They're not going to like you, and we don't like to face that. See, there's a decision we have to make, and we cannot sidestep this one. Because what people are going to find about themselves is that they're locked into something they can't get out of. Don't you know that in the Bible, a person's ability to see the wrong they're doing is going to be taken away? That's when God turns a person over to a reprobate mind. That's when God sends them a strong delusion that they would believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who loved not the truth but had pleasure and unrighteousness. People have adopted the ways of the beast already. 
In Revelation, it says they worshipped the dragon, which gave power to the beast. Well, we know the dragon's been around for a long time. They already worshipped the dragon. We know they brag of the beast. Lord have mercy. Not They're not bragging on the living God. They're bragging on the beast. Who's able to fight us? Nobody can beat us. That's bragging on the beast. That's precisely what they said. They said, who can make war with the beast? With their chest puffed up. See what that what this is telling us is something very clear. The folks who have been living this way are not all of a sudden going to say, "Nope, I'm not going to live that way anymore. I'm going to go right with Christ." Wrong. They're going to be given over to a reprobate mind. They will not have an ability to see the fullness of their transgression anymore because they said no all their lives. That's why. In the moments when they had clarity, they chose the world and they chose against the living God. And in their works was the proof of what they truly wanted. Because it's a trail of death behind them. And to those people who continue in these ways, God said he will give them over to the desires of their flesh. And they will think it's okay to do. So I'm telling you right now on this day, in this hour, a choice is upon everybody. How long will God tolerate people saying, well, I'll choose tomorrow? Did you? Did we really think that would continue to the end of time? Because isn't that what we do? We don't want to make a certain choice, do we? We don't. We keep giving ourselves excuses. Well, God is loving, and so he'll give us time to make up our minds. He did. He gave you something called a life. And he knows when the end of your life is. You don't. That means up until that very time, when people make excuses for themselves, they are aware. And all that time, they say, see, when you're aware of what you're doing, and you choose not to do something, you did so knowingly, with the fullness of your mind. Whenever we can do that, listen, whenever we can identify that we need to repent of something, but we choose not to do it, we just said no. And the Bible says, whoever is doing that, God will give them over to that reprobate mind. So those inconvenient things, those things that were never designed for mankind to do, they'd be given over to it. Maybe that's why you're seeing what you're seeing all of a sudden. Because people are being given over to the answer they have been giving without words. There's an answer you give, but you did not speak the answer. You're living it. And God is giving people over to it. Maybe that's why we see an increase in those things of this world. Mystery solved. Let me take a break, and I'll be right back here at COT. All right, let's go. Let's go back to what we were doing. Do I have a do I have a breakthrough? And the voice saying, "What's going on here? What's going on here? Huh? Isn't that something?" Here we go. Oh, somebody has a good question. You ready? Somebody said, "I'm confused." Is having an allegiance to a country or country's flag or leader worshiping the beast? Okay, here we go. The flag stands for something, right? The flag does. It stands for something. The flag was made in representation of what this country stands for. As 
almost like a time capsule on a piece of material, right? So then any allegiance in truth is not to a flag, but what that flag represents. All right? But that's in truth. I mean, let me tell you, because you're Christians, right? A Christian has one allegiance only, and all others are withdrawn. Here's why. You ready? Now, that doesn't mean you're not a patriot. That's not what that means. It does not mean somehow you're against the country you came from. That's not what it means. It means you've been elevated. You've been pulled out of the world, delivered from the world. You've been set aside for use of the kingdom. That's what it means, right? Now, if God pulled you out of the world, right, the apostles, they were part of things, weren't they? Did they go back to doing what they were doing? No. No, they took up new positions in the kingdom of God. We're called out of the world, out of it, totally out of the world. We're called out of the world, elevated to a position in the kingdom of God where we intercede for the world. You've been promoted, not demoted. You've been pulled up a little higher, not dethroned. You've been pulled out of the muck, not pushed in the muck. So your first allegiance is to your Lord and Savior. You do his work. That's the work you do. That's the kingdom you represent. You're ambassadors to Christ. You have no divided thing going on. Now, as far as the country that you live in, appreciate and be thankful for the house God put you in. Doesn't matter where you are. Be thankful for it. Because you're in that house for change. You're there to make a change, not to perpetuate the same ideologies in which men do war about. No, you bring a new standard, a standard of deliverance and liberty of Christ. You got to remind yourself, see, this is where your faith kicks in. This is where your belief kicks in. This is, this is when you have to make that deciding decision. The kingdom of God will be installed on this earth, and the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord. They will. Now, if God pulled you out of the world to represent the kingdom of God, you don't turn on your own house. You're there for deliverance of that house. You have a work to be done. You know what that actually means? In the beginning, you had allegiance to the ideology of a nation. God elevated you. You're not there to share the ideas of man, but to have mankind liberated, to have mankind get ready to be a part of what Satan attempted to destroy. You're not there for one nation's deliverance. You're here for the deliverance of all. There's not going to be the nations as you see them. Hmm? When the kingdom is installed, you've been elevated. Like being a believer in a household. You don't continue to adopt the ways of your uncle who's in the corner. Right? You don't keep the ways of your brother who's always doing his thing too. No, that's not what you do. You learn of the Lord. You apply his good news to the house you're in, attempting to deliver that good news to the household. Be thankful for the house. Be thankful for it. But do the Lord's work. Be careful to do the Lord's work. Do what you're called to do. See, that's something you have to find. 
not to continue with it because I'll tell you right now, I do not support what these newbies are calling this, this democracy that they have is not the democracy I started out with. It's not. Right now, these kingdoms are highly perverted. I don't support the perversion in these countries. I do not. I don't. And I fought in combat. I fought for you. You are the country, not the piece of dirt. You, your way of life is what I fought for. See how different that is? See, because let me tell you something. You have some people who forget about the people, and they lift up the stuff, and they've forgotten about their brother. And that's not me. That's not me. In fact, that's no one God ever sent. God forsook all lands to save the people. Did he not do that with the great flood? Yes, he did. He destroyed everything. Because man was tainted terribly. And he forsook everything for the sake of his people. He forsook everything again. Didn't he? His word. What was Jesus? The word of God made flesh and dwelt among men. He nailed the first word to the cross. The word that said you were guilty. He nailed it to a cross. What did he give us? Huh? A New Testament. Which requires a New Testator. Now the word that's over you liberates you from the corruption. That is the world. It'd be nice to think of these kingdoms as flawless. They are not. They are of man. What God is doing is of God and is holy. A great destruction is coming. See, this is why a great destruction must come to all places, not some. Every single last place on the face of the earth. It must come, or else, how could anyone live with such contradictions? There's an ideology I support. It is not what they kill each other over right now. Right now, we're in the middle of a governmental civil war. I said that back in 2022. You start to see it in 2023. You really see it now. They're killing each other. They don't care what the fallout is. I'm telling you right now. They don't care. They don't care. Oh, but it's more than just politics. It's in every nook and cranny of these kingdoms. You think all of a sudden it's going to get better by itself? No. And who's in charge of these kingdoms? Is it our father? No, it is not. So let me ask you this. If our father, if these kingdoms are not his, not yet, he'll make that declaration. If they're not his, then whose are they? If they're not holy, they're unholy. There is no in-between. Which means, if they're unholy, and your allegiance is purely, to these places, then your allegiance is to someone who's behind the ideologies of these places. Listen, don't be deceived. Even a murderer can hug his brother, but he's still a murderer. A thief can help you stand on your feet, but he'll also rob you as soon as you're standing. Don't be fooled. By was presented openly. Don't be fooled. But make sure you know what you're called for. Make sure you know about your father's call. Open your eyes to what's happening in these systems.
with these kingdoms. Because it's divided, partly strong, isn't it? Partly weak. It is. The freedom we once fought for, it's been established, but the problem is, darkness has usurped the tools and the mechanisms for establishing that freedom. Amendments have altered and changed what was once good intention into something else. Lord have mercy. And now they fight for causes of abominations that God does not approve. Period. The kingdoms have been usurped. It always looks innocent in the beginnings until you begin to see the inside of the cup. Remember what Jesus said to that group of people? He said, you clean the outside of the cup, it's beautiful. But the inside, you're full of dead men's bones. And he told everybody else, don't you do like these do. Don't do like they do. They're concerned about the outside. But the inside, this darkness, death, Jesus specifically said, do not do after these men. Don't do like they do. So I'll say the same thing. Be appreciative. For the house the Lord has you in. Intercede for that house. But don't do like the people of that house. Because they have lost their way. You can see it. It takes folks just like you for things to continue in the first place. There are people right now in the military who believe in the Most High. And believe me, it's a difficult job because even they realize, right? They don't practice democracy. They preserve it, but they understand that democracy is no longer democracy. That every, many things have been changed. And let's go ahead and face it. In, in America, the Democrats want one thing and the Republicans want something else. And now the independents want something totally different. It's a house divided against itself. And what, what is the spiritual law of God concerning that? He said, a house divided against itself shall not stand. All of what we see will come to nothing. But the Lord already said that the saints will possess the kingdoms of this earth. You, 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 you. The one who said, should I, should I be dedicated? I'm going to use that word. Dedicated. Should I be dedicated to these kingdoms or how do I do that? No, no, be thankful for the house the Lord put you in. Understand what men are trying to do. Compliment what is holy. Shun what is evil. But have an understanding that you hold a higher standard. God elevated you by pulling you out of the world. You can actually see it. Even to have that conflict within yourself, to, to want to be able to choose one from the other, it means you can see something you did not see before. When you're in the middle of it, it's very difficult to see. When you step back, you can clearly see it. Through the representation that's being made manifest right now is what you guys are saying. You're saying a manifestation of what's been held back for a long time. That's what you're saying. In this governmental civil war, you're starting to see the ugly insides of the cup and what people really want. And I'm telling you right now, they're not hiding what they really want. They're flaunting it to everybody that's in front of your face. I personally agree with the most time. What about you guys? I agree with the most time. I don't agree with my own flesh. I do not agree with the desires of flesh, even of my own desires of flesh. I agree with the Most High. What's happening in the world is clear. It's becoming very dark 
And Jesus warned us. He said, work while it's day, because when the night come, no man can work. As Solomon said, there's a time and a season for everything. And there was a time for high-level patriotism, for the survival of these nations. It was. There was a time when people had to fight. It was. But now we've stepped into a new era, an era where Christ is being shunned from all these kingdoms. Can't you see it? And I'll tell you something. I'm not loyal to anything that will not embrace my Savior. Hmm? Because if it's not of my Savior, it's not of the kingdom. And I have no business in it, nor do I have a desire to be a part of that. The original ideology of this nation is still there. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. It depends on who's ruling the nation. That's what the nation becomes. It depends on the people of that nation. That's what the nation becomes. A long time ago. It was different. Up to, a few years ago, it was different. But right now, are you kidding? I do not want what some of these folks want. See, they can say what they want, but they, don't, they will not understand the language nor the heart of one who would dare be an ambassador in this world. But I have to tell you, my loyalty is to Christ. That's what my loyalty is to. I'll also tell you that has cost me everything. Hmm? And Jimmy Craig Corn. These nations are starting to see what's been on the inside, hiding. Everything in secret is being bought out to see. And it just so happens that the world doesn't care what you see. Iniquitous people, they don't care what you see. They don't. They do not. You really don't. But I have no split interest. And please have an understanding that you were called out of the world to make a difference in the world. Hmm? God set you aside for himself. You're ambassadors to Christ and of his kingdom. That is the priority. Nothing else has power to make a change in this world, except those of you who receive the call. What did Jesus say? Jesus said the world hated him and desired to kill him. So if you follow Christ, Jesus said the world's going to hate you. These kingdoms are of this world. They are. All of them are of this world. That means if you follow Christ, they're going to hate you. And your families, when you believe in Christ and nobody else does in the middle of your families, you don't go around saying, I believe in Christ and nobody's going to change my mind. That's not what you say. You believe in Christ, you understand that you're working in the middle of darkness, you intercede, you pray, it's a, it's a heaviness, it's a job, it's a work, but you're there to intercede. Same thing goes for the nation you find yourself in. God said, if my people who were called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn and seek my face, then he would do something. He would turn and heal the land. He would hear them from heaven. 
and healed the land. He didn't say that about those of the world. He didn't. They will not call on him. You do that. The world's not calling on the living God. The world is calling on men. The world worships whatever they put in charge. You're the one that intercedes. You're the last line of defense. First of all, let me ask you guys something. Why did Jesus, why was Jesus sent in the first place? Do you guys know what the Bible says? Why was Jesus sent? Why was he sent? What, what was he doing? What is the gospel doing? What is it doing? What is the gospel doing? Hmm? What is the gospel doing? Anybody? Come on, we covered this what, what, a, 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 a month ago. What is he doing? What is the gospel doing? What is the main purpose the Bible says Jesus came? There, there it is. To destroy the works of Satan. What works of Satan? What Satan did, he did to the kingdoms. He did to the people of this world. He did. You see it. There's a, there, there, there's a testimony of his wickedness before you every single day. Jesus came that those works would be destroyed, but how? Through you. 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 Through you. So he called you out of the world to make a difference, to destroy those works of the devil. You are that element of destruction for darkness. You are. God chose to work through you. And that's why you believe. Do you see it? Do you see it? No wonder Jesus said men ought to pray always. No wonder you're an instrument of authority in the earth, heavenly authority. An ambassador is a representative of a place that carries the authority of that place. That's what you are. You're an ambassador of Christ. In this earth, in whatever kingdom you're in, whatever nation you're in, with the authority of Christ in whatever nation you're in, you are to make a difference. You guys starting to see? Because a lot of people never see that. They, they, they join the place thereof. And they begin to fight the same fight that's in the world with the weapons of the world making no difference at all. Have you ever wondered why all the hard work and the death and the blood turns to nothing? All the fighting that happened in the USA only to come to 2024 and fight internally again. The nature of the fight is different, but the casualties... There's still casualties. There's a governmental civil war. There's a war of man against man within this nation. This war is of a different type of nature, but it's the same war. The war was open. You could see one person shoot another. Do you not know that gun crimes in America are worse than the... We have a civil war every single month here in America. And nobody cares. It's the same thing. It's labeled differently, but the same thing. Did you guys see that? The civil war is over, they say. Why are people still dying like they're in the civil war? What is happening? It's got a different label. But the same casualties are building up. Did you see? And who is keeping this destructive way alive? It's not our father. No. 
It's you know who, Satan. And if you don't intercede, they're going to have the same issues over and over again as they have been having. There are people starving in America to death, kids. Kids with bloated stomachs from insulin resistance, from not eating in this country. Other countries have the exact same problem. There are three democracies in this nation. People have different ideologies about what democracy is, and they're fighting about it. Lord have mercy. No wonder the Lord sent ambassadors. You are the difference in these kingdoms. You are. All right, let me read this. The third angel. If any man worship the beast, his image, and receive his mark in the forehead or his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and who whosoever receiveth the mark in his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and from their works, and their works do follow them. Did you guys see that? Look, look, he says, here, this Revelation fourteen twelve. here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. He's pointing to this. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. That's an acknowledgement that in a terrible time. Did you guys hear me? Listen. It didn't say, it didn't say, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, or who have died in the Lord in the past 15 scriptures. That's not what it said. It said from here forward. From here, what, what do you mean? From here on, from henceforth, from here on. What do you mean? When the beast is around. Why? Because you have to make that choice in that era of the beast, like right now. You have to make some choices. Listen, if you follow the world, sure, people are going to like you in the world. You're going to have it easy. You can join your little clubs, this and the other. Fine. If you do it the Lord's way, you're not going to have very many friends of the world. If your loyalty is with Christ, the world is going to be your enemy. So it's a heavy burden to choose righteousness in this time, yet you've been sent in this time. See, a lot of people right now, they don't want to make that choice. We talked about that before we ever got to this. A lot of people do not want to make that choice. They don't. Because they know as soon as they make that choice, if it's not aligned with righteousness, they're going to start seeing it. They're going to be made aware of some things, and they don't want that. They don't want to do that. Because that's hard. You have to, you, you know what, oh my goodness, you have to give up some things. You have to let go of the rest of the world that you're holding on to. See, a lot of people are holding on to things in the world for security. Well, I can't give it up, Lord. I need it.
those who step in the Lord during that time will have made a choice. Is it an easy choice? No, it is not. And it's not easy because it's very difficult to see. It's a lifestyle you're not used to. It is not an easy choice. But this is not about making an easy or hard choice. It's about you choosing your family in truth. My family is represented by the one who died for me. The one I identified with when I was a babe. The one I have faith in. The one I've always had faith in. Christ. His gospel. His priority with me. And that's when I choose. Is it easy? No. No, it is not. But that's my choice. Because I truly do believe. See, when you truly believe, you're going to make a choice too. When you absolutely believe, oh, you're going to make a choice. Not for the prestige, not for the power, not for any of that, but out of pure honor for God Almighty and His Son, Jesus Christ, with full recognition of what He did. And then you're going to desire that liberty be upon those who are broken around you. And you'll go to work, not for the kingdoms of this world, but for the kingdom of the living God. And the Lord will do what he said he'd do. Your eyes will be opened. And you'll begin to see more than you ever have. That's when you learn the importance of your enemy, of your brother, of your sister. That's when you see how precious and rare they truly are. That's when you fight the good fight for all around you. That's when you become concerned about your neighbor's deliverance, about his welfare. That's when we become real, not spectators. No, no, no. Because things are changing fast. Now some, some will not choose the Lord, unfortunately. They won't. They're going to choose the alternative. They're going to continue to give themselves room to do their world thing. They're going to be caught unawares and by surprise. And for them, it's going to be too late. And anguish and torment will await them. And their torment will begin on this earth and will continue into eternity. Now, for those, right, who know about that choice that they don't want to make, but they love the Lord, I'm telling you now, the choice for Christ is going to win out. So let me continue to read. It says this, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon that cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe and he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped 
And another angel came out from the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came from the altar which had power over fire, and he cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the cluster of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle in the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. Do you see that? He just took that sickle, dipped it into the earth, scooped it up and threw it into the wine press of the wrath of God, not the blessing of God, the wrath of God. Oh, my, listen to me. Listen. And the wine press was trodden without the city, that means outside the city, and blood came out of the wine press, even unto a horse's bridle, by the space of a thousand and six furlongs. Now, let me read this real quick so you guys get this. And I saw another sign in heaven and a great marvelous, great marvelous, seven angels having seven last plagues. For in them is filled the wrath of God. Now, let me stop there. What this, listen, what this means is this. These people were given a decision to make, weren't they? Weren't they? See, because it said in Revelation 14, 12, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and of the faith of Jesus. In other words, those, those who belong to Christ will do this. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. From this point forward, blessed are those who die in the Lord. Now, if you die in the Lord, you're dying doing the will of God in the earth, not the will of the world, but of, of the will of God. It says, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. You see that? Their labors. They had labors in the earth, works in the earth, in the time of the beast. Listen, and it says, and their works do follow them. Their works will not be forgotten, and they're going to be blessed. My goodness, why? Because they lived at a time when they had to make a choice. The mark of the beast represents a choice people are going to make for either the world all the way or Christ. See, if you have the mark, here's the difference. If you have the mark, you can play like you still belong to Christ. But the world is in your works and the world is in your mind. You see the difference? When you don't have the mark, and you're laboring for the Lord, it is obvious. Those who have the mark are those who have a mindset and the works to do those things for these kingdoms of the earth. They are so different from those who have a true heart for Christ. Hmm? Can you see it? Can you see these choices? Because we ask ourselves, like that question that was asked, that was actually a good question. That was, that was a good question. Oh, boy, that was a good question. Because it was a decision, a point of the confusion in the world right now. Oh, wait a minute. Do I still support the kingdoms of the earth right now? Do I be loyal to it? Or just totally abandon it? See, that's that, that's that question that pops up. It didn't pop up all the time. And it does not get our serious attention. But when the Lord has this opportune time to present things, that's when we start to think about it. And we don't want to make that decision. Let's go ahead and face that. We don't want to make that decision. That's a hard decision. To either go one way or the other. Are you kidding? Especially. When you're prosperous, especially when your career looks all flawless in one area and you're a person of promise to many, especially, right, there's a, your career speaks for itself. And they start asking for those commitment tasks and you know a day will come when you have to say no. No. 
Nope. And you know what you could face when you say no. You know what you could face. Nobody wants to make that choice. In truth, they don't. But those people who make that choice, who choose the kingdom of God, who go forward in the kingdom of God, well, then there we are. Right? The Lord's going to help us in that area, too. See, right now, it's one thing. When the immorality is no longer hidden, when iniquity is no longer hidden. See, right now, iniquity is still covered up. So it looks like, you know, it's not why leave it when it's not, it's, it's not bad or anything. You know, it's up to the person's interpretation. Stuff like that doesn't seem bad. But see, that's why God said he would uncover everything. He who now letteth will let until it be taken out of the way. Then that wicked will be revealed. Well, when, when the restrainer is taken out of the way, and when you see iniquity, the backstory of everything is going to be seen. The heart of what men have been worshiping is going to be seen. The truth of what is going on is going to be seen. And in that moment, if you continue, right? Because the Lord said, in that same moment, God will send them a strong delusion that they would believe a lie, that they all might be damned who love not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So here's the key. If you have pleasure in unrighteousness, you're willingly ignorant of the truth. That means you're going to blind yourself because you're choosing iniquity over righteousness purposely. I can tell you right now, I do not have pleasure in unrighteousness. I hate unrighteousness. That's why I can't stand my own flesh. I don't care what anybody says. I do not like my own flesh. You got to deal with yours. I'll deal with mine. I do not like mine. Because it craves continuously. It wants continuously. It's never content continuously. One day, the darkness, the secret darkness, will be revealed. And in that moment, those who had pleasure in unrighteousness are going to be fully given over to unrighteousness. Those who are choosing Christ now and fighting tooth and nail to overcome that darkness, you will be liberated. At the same time, those who have pleasure in unrighteousness are given over to that delusion that comes from God. At the same time, God's people, God's people will be liberated. And they'll never turn to darkness again. That means your struggle is going to be over. That'll be a good day. But, hey. Keep in mind, these choices are, are not easy. And it takes us to be authentic. All right? Does it mean you have to quit your job? No, that's not, that's not what we're talking about. Does it mean you have to resign your commission? That's not what we're talking about. All right? No, no, no. We're talking about something that all of us have dealt with, that we simply do not want to face all the time. We all know about that. Each of us knows. We have an instinctual knowing of what we have to do. And let's go ahead and face it. How many times have we turned away from it? I don't want to do that. I don't want to make that decision right now. One day it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late because God has given us something called a life.
He is our liberation. He is our salvation. He is our redemption. But he did charge us. It's our responsibility to authentically choose. And you're choosing every single day. Every day. Okay, I saw a question in COT. Hold on, everybody. I saw something in COT. I want you guys to do me a favor and retype that question because I totally missed it. I saw a piece of it. So retype it. How about that? Someone says, can you help understand Psalm 4610? I'm sure that I can. We'll do that on a Q. Save that question for a Q and A. Can you save that for a Q and A? I'll review that though. I'll review that. We'll save that for a Q and A, folks. In in chapter fourteen of Revelation, right? In chapter fourteen, we see something so eerily similar to today. Something spoken in a in a almost like a spiritual tongue of things spiritually happening today, but they have real world consequences. They do. They do. They have real world consequences. Mm -hmm. All of us. Listen, it's up to us to choose, not to manipulate. So somebody chooses what you want them to choose. It's up to us to choose authentically. I encourage each of you to keep each other encouraged about these choices. That you encourage each other. Remind one another that we're part of the kingdom of God if we choose it. And if we walk in that direction, that we're ambassadors to Christ. We're not of dual citizenship, but we belong to a real kingdom. You guys belong to a real kingdom that you'll see. Because this world is going to start ripping itself to pieces. And it is distasteful. It is. But these things must come. Remember when Jesus said offenses must come? And now you see most people operate by offenses. They are highly offended at just about everything. All these things Jesus spoke. You can see hints of. And he really encourages us. He really does. Go forward in him. I encourage you to search it out. Search it out. Not everybody has to go through the same thing somebody else does in accordance to how God made you, to what you're sent for, what your calling is. You will go through things. Some of them will be light, some heavy. It depends on who you are. But understand this. God will never place anything upon you beyond that which you can bear. Make a good choice, authentically. Hmm? Somebody's worried about Wednesday. Oh, that was my hypothetical. Huh? That was mine. Now, folks, obviously, it's at that time, right? Are you kidding the computers? The computer says to, uh, what does it say? Well, at least it waited this time. That's interesting. It says it must restart. And they impeached somebody at the, uh, they, they had their impeachment. You guys know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to go any further with that, but uh, they, they got the number of people to do it. So that person's effectively impeached. They're going to continue this back and forth. You guys know that, right? 
it's going to become quite brutal. Quite brutal. There will be many casualties. It's so unfortunate. But understand something. God's everlasting kingdom is going to be set up right here on this earth. There will be a thousand-year reign. You are part of that thousand-year reign. You are leaving this earth. So let's all get ourselves ready. Mm -hmm. Oops. Somebody have four updates on a computer? Yes. Lots of lots of uh, uh, placement for AI things going on. Huge update coming up for uh, Apple products in a couple of days. Huge update, a big update. Um, they're getting everything ready for the transition. All right, they are. A few new regulations are coming too. A few new ones. Hey guys, listen. Tomorrow, when we come back for tomorrow's conversation, uh, I, I I really do hope that I'm. My voice seems to be getting better. It really that's crazy. It, but it is right. Um, when you know when you have a, a a throat like that, you have a sore throat. This and the other. It's not. You're not supposed to talk, and it gets better as you talk. Thank you, Lord, for that. But that's what happened. Oh, it really hurt bad before I began. It did. Did that yesterday, too. Yes, they are incorporating AI into everything, yes. The, the, the software updates that most people had that in uh, 2023 prepped their system, right? They, they were actually probing. Microsoft probed its products for, for uh, compatibility, and everybody else probed their own products for compatibility. Now, uh, everything should be compliant. It's not that big. The heart of the system is going to function with its main, uh, I guess you could say it's its brain uh, in another state. You become an effective node and, and you know, back at peace. So, yeah, that's all it is. That's all it is. So, when I say you need colloidal silver, I have silver in my system. I do. So I'm good to go. And the reason why people take colloidal silver is because, uh, you know, you have silverware, right? Right. Let me give you an example. Silver necklace. A lot of people say, well, I'm allergic to things that are not silver. The truth is bacteria can settle within the grooves of ordinary metal, right? It cannot do that with gold or silver. Bacteria does not survive. Viruses don't survive in the presence of silver. Because of how silver the silver molecule actually is, um, so yeah, that's why. And if you ingest silver, right, your body has silver in it anyway. Uh, it goes into your system, and of course, it it will start to repel bacteria. You have to be careful though, because your intestines works from a bacteria that that silver can kill, right? It can kill. Your body has all the minerals of the earth. Copper you can get from just about anything. You know, on that, I'm, I'm telling you guys something. When people die naturally, normally it's from an aneurysm, believe it or not. And the aneurysm is caused from a copper deficiency. Do you know that? Copper deficiency. There's something in it. Not me. I found out something. Um. I have very specific things I eat because my brain will slow down if I start eating things that will inhibit the firing, obviously, of neurons and are very sensitive to speed of thought. Right? When, I, when you get frustrated, aggravated, you're normally depleted, your B complex uh, of vitamins, right? Your hormones are not regulated. For ladies, you may have a drop in your estrogen levels. You're, you, When it's gloomy like it was today in several parts of the world, uh, you're going to have a drop in vitamin D, which will affect your estrogen levels, which will put you in a bed, make you emotional, more emotional than others, right? 
if you take a mineral, and the one thing I don't do, you know how most people drink bottled water, right? I want water with minerals in it. I don't want uh, empty water. Anyway, folks, I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. <clears throat> I'll do that. Somebody says, how do you increase your copper? It is best to take a, uh, you know, do your homework for a multibite and get it that way. Right? Uh, they have two good providers of that stuff out there. I don't want to, you know, select one over the other on air. I don't want to do that. Um, but uh, most multivitamins have those minerals in them. So take them. But but listen, take care of your body so that your body can serve you as you seek to serve the Lord. Make sure you have a purpose behind everything that you do. Make sure of that. Okay, make sure of that. With that, folks, I'm going to say God bless each of you. I'm going to see you next time right here at COT. Hopefully next time it will sound a bit better. Hopefully. Okay. God bless you guys. It, listen, as always, uh, it's an honor to join you all. Remember something. Read the word. Read the word yourself so you can hear what the Lord has to say to you directly. God bless you. You guys are awesome. Take care of one another, and I'll see you guys next time right here at COT. God bless.